they know we're, we're you know that it's here yeah so that's it and ncm hub is the former port media yeah so or we, transition the yes. name i worked with our illustrious board um in <clears throat> changing the name because it we we went from not only having the channels but also having the low power fm radio and we do have this wobbling um packet post which is an online journalism project which you know it, it, it's everything takes time but we do post things on there and so we do have that on the online so that's another outlet uh, another part of community media yeah so what so it's so it's overarching the hub was just to say for community media so if there was something else that came along we could do that here we have some youth programs we do um hopefully in the future we will do a, you know what i've thought about doing is a little bit more digital technology workshops but you know we're very uh, uh, resource poor <laughs> i don't like the word poor but that's what i've heard we are <clears throat> And so for community media, we have this, the Low Power FM station. We have our cable access channels. And we have that pocket post, like you said. Packet post. Pa packet, excuse me. Oh, packet I can post. explain where the packet <laughs> came from, too. So it was very clever. So packet ships are clipper ships, and they were called packet ships because they brought packets of mail. And so it was a, sort of a play on words, and I don't know what the technical thing is but also um digital media travels through packets through the internet clever huh that's, that is very clever what can i tell you very it's, very that's what happens up here <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of that going on so anyway but it, i think it's great it is great it's great that there's a hub like that there's so many aspects to mm -hmm. to the community um we've had some interns that will write um a story and put it on the packet post and then it, it sits there but it also gets tweeted out um and you know I, it, when i get um um what do they call press releases from the city or from any place that are long because people send us long things that i can't do anything with them i can put them there now so and so ncm hub also has a presence on twitter on instagram mm -hmm. on facebook mm -hmm. Uh, which is an and old you, form of social media, yes, right? Yes, and you, <laughs> YouTube. Yep. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, and we had, I had, um, and, and SoundCloud. So we have, um, like, this show will, you know, be on SoundCloud, as is your other show that you have done, or two, one or two. And um, all of our radio programs, we take the audio, and it goes on SoundCloud. And um, if we have someone that's interested in doing a podcast, and it's not on the radio, we put it on SoundCloud. Um, and, and we can actually host other people's programming on SoundCloud if they if someone said oh this is really great podcast can we share it with the community we can put it on SoundCloud hmm, that's interesting uh, so what is since we're on the radio right now what is low power FM so low power FM radio um, is just what it says it's low power so it's a um, hundred watts I think max watts out of our antenna, which is based on height and um, some other calculation, I think it's 236 watts. Um, but it's a three to 10 mile radius, generally speaking, um, whereas let's say EEI, which um, might bleed through if you're on the periphery of that three to 10 mile radius, um, they have, I don't know, like 100,000 watts or something that comes screaming out of Cape Cod you know, so low power FM is very, very local based radio. A lot of churches have had low power FM. Um, educational institutions actually have 600 watts from what I understand. So it's like that's a little step higher. Like Masco, I think, has their own radio station and it's 600 watts. Um, yeah, so it's it's very good. It's, it's really a good tool, a tool, if you want to call it a tool, to have for emergencies in a community. We haven't quite exploited that yet because we do need a generator um, here at the senior center and also some way at the high school. So our tower, our um, antennas at the high school. So both places would have to have power in order for it to be um, helpful during a, a electrical crisis of some sort where we don't have power. But we have the we have the radio station. So that's the, the first part. Mm -hmm. And so, how would it work during, a, let's say, an emergency if there were generators for those the, for the antenna? So, someone them? could come in here and generate a, a radio program to people who had FM radio, mm -hmm. um, 
uh, and power. So or, or, or batteries, batteries right. exactly. Yeah. So the other thing is too. I think right now, from here to the high school, I believe it goes over. Um, some portion of it is coax to fiber. I think is what uh, it's actually over the internet. I believe is what it is. It's an IP, so it's over the internet. There is a way. F- again, this is all future, but it, it, it is something to consider that we could go over the fiber that's in the city, and then there's it's okay if the internet's out, so someone could still um, broadcast emergency information. I mean, the mayor could come in, um, the Leclerc could come in, you know. Um, a community member could come in and share important information. Mm-hmm. If this is out and the high school is not out, you can go to the high school. We have a, um, a microphone there, and I believe there's instructions. You can plug right directly in there and broadcast. So it's good. That's how they spoke during Superstorm Stan- Sandy and also Hurricane Katrina. The only things uh, available were low-power FM. In the New York City area? In, in for the Superstorm Sandy, yep, that yeah. was the New York, lo, you Long know, Island, yeah. yep, that New that Jersey. was, and then um, Katrina. Wow. Yeah. Well, let's hope that we don't need it for those those purposes. Y- yes. But it is, yeah, really, really important, a, an important tool. And how did how did Port Media end up or NCM Hub end up uh, getting the low power FM? Um, around 2010, when I um, had come into this job from being on the board. Uh, Prometheus Radio, which is a um, nonprofit organization, supports low-power FM radio and radio in general, the radio people, um, had been after um, access centers to pay attention to when the filing time would be when they were releasing these bands for um, to, so you could apply for them. Um, knowing that this was like the last time that you'd be able to acquire a um, this kind of communication um, in, in a, for a community. So in um, 2012, I think, I want to say 12 was the licensing. Um, and I, you know, so we applied. I had an engineer do an engineering, the engineering portion of it. And we applied. You put, you know, what you're, you think you're going to do and what you can offer the community. And there were three people that applied for this um, I guess what you call it, band, 96.3, and we got it because we had the most things we were offering. Community. They go by points or things like that. So, And we, of course, would let other people who want to produce a show, if it's in, you know, if it is in the format and good for the community, then they could do a show. Certainly. So. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So I know that you have been involved in the community access for a long time. You started as a volunteer and then it as a board you, member. No. It, it dates you, Yes, because oh. when you say, cause <laughs> I used to think, wow, someone's been 25 years. Oh, they've got to be old. So now yeah. when I go, oh, I was here, I've been here this 26th year. Wow. I know. That's See? Wow. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> was TV even around back then? I know. No. It's unbelievable. I'll tell you, the cameras were not the same. They were not the same. And you know who did stuff with me? Elizabeth Marcus. Mm-hmm. That was after a, co- a couple of years. Her, um, sadly, her husband had passed away. And she, I think, was you know going to go out and do some things in the community. And we lived in the same neighborhood. And I didn't talk to her that much because her kids were older and Matthew was younger. But we had, I was down at the hale street station um studio doing something i don't remember what and she had come in and so we just touched base but she had wanted to do if you're listening elizabeth a show on flower boxes Mm. she still hasn't done that yet (laughs) so i don't feel so bad about what i have not done (laughs) she's done a lot of stuff she does the um the um earthport film festival which is just really great so yeah it certainly is but the cameras were huge that was my point like they were ridiculous now you just take your camera out of your pocket so when you started as a community volunteer was it what was it about cable access that made you just think i want to get involved with this so um i moved here in 1993 wow again and my folks had also just moved to the cape Um, my mom retired and um we were in connecticut and i knew there was community i think they call, i think that was called community television in connecticut it's like out of danbury i think um but my dad had said and this was 
right in 93 when we got here we were just chatting on the phone and he said well he was going he had to go because he had to go do a class or a show and i go what, what are you talking about and he said oh i'm volunteering at the community media center i learned how to use a video camera and stuff like that so i'm helping on a show and i was like oh that is really cool he goes well i'm sure they have it in newburyport so i was like what so sure enough they had it in Newburyport. So I immediately started to take the, they, Janet had offered classes. Janet Morrissey, who is um, currently works in Georgetown, running their cable access, um, took a class and started to, you know, help, you know, mostly as a volunteer. I did take the camera out. It was monster. The things were huge, <laughs> heavy, and with the tape, they had either beta or the VHS. They weren't even the smaller. They were the big, like, it was silly very heavy uh, but i did um it's probably all destroyed now um some filming i was trying to learn and george woundy who i heard is back in town and um mary carrier has suggested maybe he might be interested in doing something with her on a show and he can come and run this board um he was there and did a lot he worked for the post office so a lot of people remember george and yeah, we did. We had a lot of fun times down there. We did. I did a show with um, ran the camera for EJ, who did a uh, EJ Let, who did a show called Fiddle Magic. It was a lot of fun. So and so, then you continued to stay involved. I did, and so did my father up until his death in 2014. He yeah. was still involved with cable. He helped him do the sim- similar things. He was on the board. He helped do the contract, and they had a regional thing, which was much more complicated. Mm-hmm. There was, like, Cape Cod Community Television or something. Um, but we ha- used to have a lot of conversations about, you know, just the politics of community television and local media and all that, this kind of stuff and just the funding and, and all of that because it can be complicated, and also it's very – grassrootsy in a way because it's really town by town it's and everything is different they're all different and i i personally think that that is to make it each town have less power that's my feeling so hmm. so originally it started at the uh comcast office right yes the building mm-hmm. you know, on hale street yep where comcast was and then you did move over to a studio on graff road yep and yeah, it was con- it was Continental Cable Vision, and then I think uh, Media One, AT and T. Um, yeah, and now we're here at the Senior and Community Center, which is a great location it in is. terms of access to young people. It's and um, it's beautiful, all ages. It's very light and open, and has a good feel. I mean, the other studio was great. I thought it was great, but we did pay about three thousand dollars, a little under that, um, which just is a lot of money. Uh, and, you know, that included property taxes, I think, and the water bill. And then separately, we paid electricity, which was very high because we had a big studio. This is a very small studio, but it's much more manageable as far as, you know, air, heat, and cooling. And it's fine. It's exactly what we need. I mean, we're not doing some, we don't can't get 25 kids in here, but we just haven't done that kind of program now. But we definitely have students coming in and helping us. And, and yeah, so it, it's worked out fine. And you have, I'm, on, I'm going to call them satellites, but they're not really satellites, but where you do the school committee meetings and the city mm-hmm. council meetings, so you have cameras and equipment in those locations as well. Yeah. More geared toward meetings. But Yeah, and just to make a step back, when I had said that it was about $3,000 for rent, some people um, don't exactly understand how we're funded. I mean, we're funded by... Um, uh, a little franchise fee that people who have Comcast cable pay. It's a couple of bucks, could be 50 cents, could be $4, depending on what your package, only cable package is. And then that's passed through, you pay that and it's passed through to um, the city and the city takes a portion of that and then we get a portion of that to run our, our facility. We are tenants here at the Senior Community Center. We pay our, um, you know, we pay rent. It's a reasonable rent, but we also had to do a build out loan. So it comes to about the same $3,000 that we were paying at the other spot, but it worked out because we're here in, in more central in the community, which we just think is great. Mm-hmm. And it gave Tinker House a chance to get a good spot. <laughs> <laughs> and so can you talk a little bit about how things have evolved over the years, especially now 
where television has changed so much and there's satellite TV. There are a lot of other uh, people are going back to antennas. <clears throat> so cable is not always the first priority any longer. Right. Uh, how has that impacted what's going on in cable access? <clears throat> well, local, local access. Yeah. Television. And then you had asked about the meetings. We do do school committee meetings here at the senior center and we do the city council down at, at the cha- city chamber. And of course, we're always looking for any volunteer that's interested in that. And, and we're probably adding a couple of additional meetings if anyone's interested and know you're dying to do civic duty and engagement um but yeah so the the way it's really changed is that people are cutting they're cord cutting um so they're dropping cable tv for streaming services such as hulu apple prime whatever you're going to call you know amazon prime um apple i said that already i can't think of all the ones that they have but they're streaming services so they go through the streaming service for the shows that they want to watch i think um I think it's called over the top. Actually, I'm not 100% sure. But um, <clears throat> when people don't, when they cut the cord, they cut our funding too. So it's gone every, really in the past years when we really start seeing the, the downward trend, about 6 to 10% per year, which is a lot. And that's across the United States. Um, and in addition to that, the FCC um, has put in order a rule change, which goes into effect next week on the 26th which will enable the uh, media um, oligopolies, I think is the word. Oligopoly? Yeah. The, the monopolies, yes. Yeah, which but are they're even, oligopolies. Yeah, they're huge. They're, yeah, <laughs> because they're like little, there's not one, but there's like five, okay? So, but they're, you know, essentially control everything <clears throat> to charge back anything that is they have considered in kind, um, which will devastate a good portion of the access centers. They will be closed because they, they will not be able to come up with whatever those funds are going to be um, because we're already pretty strapped as it is and technology is very expensive. Um, software has turned um, into a different thing. You can't buy software. You have to do um, subscriptions for most of the software. So it's thousands of dollars now. It's not just, oh, I'll buy Pro Tools, uh, although that's not a good example because I can still buy Pro Tools, but like uh, Adobe Premiere. So it's like $350 per computer per year. So you have four licenses, five, six. I mean, this stuff really adds up. And then you have your Sophos or your, your malware on everything. Um, and then anything else, you, you ha- any other software that you have. So it can get very expensive. But <clears throat> the, the thing about the funding is, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a very, it's really dry in here, but <clears throat> that's just, maybe that's just me. Um, we won't really know what position we're in until after the 26th, and then Comcast can either send a demand notice, like, okay, new report, you owe us X amount of dollars based on our evaluation of our in-kind services, which would be, um, and this really irks me because they were in the contract. So I, I really don't understand how these companies got away with, well, Chairman Pai is not for community people and community information. He was for the court. He's very much for corporate, um, you know, control, deregulating things and just letting the corporations have what they want. I mean, so that's how that's how it happened but they've essentially made all contracts that were done in a legal way like i wasn't going to be able to break our contract uh they they're they have to be renegotiated um i think comcast has the option to just let things go until the next negotiation which they may do who knows because i mean they they're this <laughs> this is all across every contract they have so now when you say they they have the option of letting things go you mean keeping it status quo keeping right, right current contract yes until the next until the next yeah cycle. so for us it's uh 2025 mm-hmm. so they might just say okay we'll just wait till 2025 and then we'll go in for the kill um for us one plus i used to be you know really feeling like upset that we hadn't acquired the full five percent that we were entitled to get through the negotiation because that would have brought more money into the community um we're at 4.3 which um, we get 3.7 3.6 and the city takes 0.7 percent of that funding for their tech fund um so the benefit is that because we're not at five percent that difference there of that 0.7 um is what they apply first to the in-kind services. So with a little luck, 
it won't affect us. We don't know. They could charge for anything. They, they tried to charge for the channels themselves, um, but they could not come to an agreement on what the value of the channel was, so they weren't able to do that. But they could charge for you know, sending the transmission of the programming up to the head end, for example. That could be, some people said it could be $1,200 per month per channel. That would be 36 I mean, right there. Forget it. I mean, it's just not doable. It's not sustainable. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. There's a lot up in the air right now. There is a lot up in the air. And I think, um, you know, the newspaper has, has given us a, a couple of good articles, which is greatly appreciated. I think that we all should be very much in support of our local news and information wherever we can get it, whether it's something you hear on this radio, whether it's um, some of the programming that the newspaper has now, which is great. They have the local pulse. That is a very good program. It lets people know what's happening in the community. These are things that people can get information. They can go online and, and f- same with us for going on SoundCloud. You can go on and um, find those programs and listen to them again if you hadn't or if you missed them or you want to hear more about it because people need to be informed that's you know it's, it's part of our job as citizens to, to be informed about what we're what's going on in our community and what better way than to either participate in in coming becoming a volunteer or starting your own show Yes. Or becoming a member, yeah. stopping by and saying hello. <laughs> yeah. I mean, things have changed a little bit for us. And right now, because we're in this uncertain period, um, and we had some good student help, which was really out of our budget, but we squeezed it in because we really, it's so great to see all the students. I think we had 13, um, a mix of college and high school students. And it gives them such a great opportunity. And they're way ahead when they get to the from their experience of being able to use the equipment hands-on. It's not like, you know, working at a, as an intern at a station where they're um, just kind of looking. Um, they actually can use the stuff and build their own programs and do their own um, filming. They did a lot of great projects this summer. Um, what was it? Where was I going with that? Oh, so we've uh, our hours are iffy. So they were on the website. I'm going to try to put something up so people have a better idea. Our website is always under construction. It was a huge undertaking, um, which it was started before we actually knew we were going to move. And it's just wasn't something I would have started <laughs> with the move because it's just been a lot of stuff. Um, but it's a great website. Um, basically, you can, if you have a question, there's a place that says, you know, it says, I think it's under the join. I'll have to check on it. I'm constantly checking to make sure that we're it's understandable. Um, but people can watch our programs on our um, website, too. So that is something that's da- coming down the road, you know, the, the end of the cable channels. That's really what's coming. And so then migrating people to the website. Exactly. And through the w- YouTube channel yep. and that sort of thing mm-hmm. for the... Uh, information Mm -hmm. and for the programming and I do I am looking at the website right now on my cell phone so I like the titles are learn create share and engage yes and and it looks nice on the phone doesn't it (laughs) it looks great (laughs) on the phone um so in in terms of the channels we do have three channels is that right right and I have felt a little bit that's you know so it was a lot to get the third channel we had three channels let's say 12 years 15 years ago they took one away and when we renegotiated in 2015 I said let's get that third channel back which took about a year or so to go through you know come on let's get it so we got it it does cost additional money for us Um, it wasn't costing them anything because I I don't think they can use it for anything else because it was always just sitting there saying local and I was like what is that that's got to be our third channel just 10 years sitting there unused Um, but now so what we did was we have the three channels are um, Clipper Cities and Schools is channel nine which is you know for the meetings and school things and then um, Voice of the People is channel eight so that is um opinion interview variety of things and then the other channel is um the waterside channel which is arts culture history and maritime which had been the thought was to bring in information there that would really be interesting to anybody or people that wanted to come to the community 
But when I found out about the third, this rule order and the possibility of losing the channels, I just really did not do a lot of pushing on telling people about Channel 98 because we might not have Channel 98, so why am I going to get people watching it? Mm -hmm. So we're still not sure of what's going on. Um, you know, if they charge us per channel for transmission of things, and it's not, it's not even worth having two channels, to be honest with you. You know, it's worth having one, mm -hmm. and it's much easier for us to maintain one. Um, so we're sort of in limbo right now, but they can go on the website and they can look, and the Channel 98 has history programming, um, boating programming. You know, uh, the students this summer tried to fill the bulletin boards with um, appropriate um, material for the different channels. Like we have our local artists are on the bulletin board on Channel 98, which is great. Um, yeah, so we have, uh, yeah, a lot there. Yes, we do. Uh, so can you talk a little bit more about the interns from the summer and the types of projects that they were working on? Mm -hmm. uh, how, how did they come to be interns? Like, how, what was that process of getting So them many here? students that, um, a good bulk of them started as um, participants in our summer youth programs that are run through Newburyport Youth Services, um, whether it's a summer video production um, you know, or we like this year we had animation. We've tried a couple of different things, but generally it's video production, and um, and then some come directly from the high school or or area high schools. Right now we have um, someone from Pentucket, and we have two students from the high school. I was going in my mind where is Nora from? Okay, yeah, new, two Newburyport High School students. Um, so the students that we had during the summer were uh, mo many of them came up through the actually taking the youth programs and then they were interns they either helped with the summer program and then they started helping during the school year and then um i've slowly hired them for uh you know made in, employed them after they've you know worked as an intern for a certain amount of time because they have the knowledge and the skills and they know what's going on so they have done some really interesting projects i mean they can just go film something also downtown which is very helpful to have the extra help where they can do um some more special projects you know that help us like filling the bulletin board for example with um local event information or a variety of things so so, Sarah, we're going to just take a, a quick station identification. This is Lynn Varney, and you are listening to WJOP Low Power, Newburyport, Joppa Radio 96.3. And I'm Lynn Varney with Sarah Hayden. We're on the air today. Oh, excellent, Lynn. That was very good. <laughs> so, um, so is there... Uh, so? Some of these students, let's see, that come in as interns and do some programming and do uh, various activities that you were just talking mm -hmm. about, can they, like, go out and get a job? Um, yeah. Well, actually, you know, they've turned out to be students that are majoring in film or communication um, who actually, they're using the skills that they've learned, and they bring back the skills that they learned from college, which is really awesome because mm -hmm. they, you know, I've seen some real... Um, improvements in, in editing and things like that and yeah I mean they um, go out and get jobs uh, I mean one of our early uh, interns he was an intern and then he was paid to do city school committee and city council meeting was Joe Keery um, of Stranger Things wow. so he did go out and get a job <laughs> <laughs> a big job I yes. think um, and then yeah I have heard uh Marley McGinnis was here as an intern and then um, was staff, and she went to Mass College of Art, and she's graduated several years now, and she works in the industry. Um, several interns work down in Boston. Um, yeah, it's great experience. Great experience, a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but and, and certainly people can do their own things and get them out on the channel even while yeah. they're here. Yeah, and I'm very open to, you know, if someone has an idea of or, you know, yeah, let's do it. it sounds good. I mean, we've had some, um, like uh, Jessica Harrington, who's worked a couple summers now. She's a senior now at Temple. Um, did a f couple of shows for um, on the radio f 
first time this year like she I don't know if she thought she was going to be in, you know, in, like in your seat interviewing somebody, but she's done a really good job. She did several interviews, and one was with a gal, Heidi. I can't remember her last name, but she's with Brides Across America, and it was a great interview. Mm. It was very exciting. Um, and then, of course, we have some other shows, too, that the students have been able to do the, you know, be like an assistant producer, which is great. You know, one of the students this year, I said, have you put that on your resume? She says, absolutely, I have. Mm -hmm. You know, for college, to, to be an assistant producer for a live radio show is great. You, you know, that's awesome. I mean, they set everything up. I mean, I think it's really great. I love seeing that. So another question that just I... I know I would certainly ask it, and I will ask it right now, <laughs> um, that I'm wondering is, so the equipment that we use here is the same equipment that they're using in, in well, yes. or maybe slightly higher quality in a, in a real yeah, well, TV I mean, station actually, or radio station? Yeah, it depends. I mean, some schools have not as good quality as what we have here, and some have a lot more. It depends. Um, but this is certainly what they're going to be using. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, for editing on the radio we use audacity um the software is um enco dad um software animate software animation software which they use in a lot of the big radios um like i don't know this npr <laughs> the bigger stations yes. and then as far as the television we use the equipment that they're going to use we use stuff that you're going to see out in the field now i mean it may not be the you know, is solid because we don't have the top of the line or all of the internet pieces that we might want to, you know, the stations can afford. But yeah, they definitely have hands on um, new equipment. So, so who can use our equipment? And, and like if, hey, I came to you and I said, I want to start I'd say doing no, a radio no. show. <laughs> <Absolutely> <laughs> no, I want to do an interview show. So, um, and, and who can become a member too? So, um, and anyone who's a resident in Newburyport can become a member. Um, and then, you know, for the greater Newburyport part, because we do extend um, three to ten miles, it's, you know, adjoining communities that, that are going to probably be able to receive that those th that, that programming. So, you know, Newbury, West Newbury, whatever, Amesbury. Um, if there was someone really close and they had some reason why they would want to come here as opposed to the next closer, which might be Haverhill or something. Um, then that's to be considered. But generally, people that come here are Newburyport, Newbury, um, sometimes Amesbury or Rowley. But um, Salisbury has their own. Amesbury has their own. I mean, Rowley, Georgetown, they all have their own access centers. Um, but, you know, we have the only radio, I think. Yeah, there is one in Salisbury, but it's not connected to the low power. I mean, it's not connected to the station. So is that what you asked me? Oh, and then, yeah. So membership is very reasonable. An organization, organization can also join and have three members trained. We have very um, basic cameras. They're really prosumer cameras. They're very simple. They're the smaller handheld um, cameras. We switch to that because people just seem to not want to take out a bigger camera that's just more complicated. And we have everything on um, tutorials on YouTube or you know on our computer here so people can look at that. Um, and then we basically will train them when they want to take a camera out or if they want to learn how to do a podcast um, before you can do a radio show you really um, we like to have you do a podcast and get it up on SoundCloud a few times to get your um, you know to see how serious you are because it, you're it's a, it's a big commitment a lot of people just don't realize what the commitment is mm -hmm. so I know you have an idea because you've been around a few times <laughs> to do some shows I mean it's a big commitment mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and um. <laughs> I do have something else, though, for people who Please. don't want to be committed. You know, they, well, I want to be committed. <laughs> Please. But for people who want to just do a show or once in a while do a show, we have open, Port Media Open Studios and um, open, like Joppa Radio Open Studios. So they can come in and just be set up and shown, okay, head, headphones, they don't have to do anything. They're just showing move this and this, you know, talk into the microphone, here's your guest, that's it. And then, you know, it's a no edit shoot kind of thing, and it, it goes. We can have it right out, like with within either that later in the afternoon or or the next day. So they don't have to commit to anything, and they don't have to learn how to use the equipment. They just want to do an interview because they're excited about a topic, but they do need to join and be a member, and they then would have to schedule the time 
reserve this the space. Mm -hmm. So open studios. It's not like it's a set time every week that there are open studios. We had, we, we yeah, we did have a set forward. time, but right now we're still a little bit in limbo with trying to figure out. We have football. We have we're we're understaffed. You know, we're not sure about what's happening with the um, potential. Uh, you know, in expenses of the new Comcast situation. Right. So we're just, um, yeah. Okay. Tell us a little bit about this, the football, the football and the hockey and basketball, I think, all the sport or several of the Newburyport High School sports go so live. We, so we do, I have to say, there's no, it's hot in this room. There's no <laughs> air. <laughs> Maybe You can open the door, Tyler, no? He's, he's very particular about the recording. Or the fan. Oh, we can turn the fan on. He's glancing. <laughs> it's really stuffy. I think we have to adjust the air flow up there. It's because it's hot. Ah. Um, we do live football, and we do do live basketball, and we do record we record hockey games. We will record the away football games, and um, we don't do all the basketball games, but we do a handful of girls and boys. We do like four of each. Maybe it's eight. I don't remember. Yeah, four of each live. And then we'll try to record as many as we can. And Richie um, does the play-by-play -play, um, with his son. Or maybe Richie does the color and someone else does the play-by-play. -play. Now it's Pat, um, who's filled in for when, when Damon used to do that. Um, and, you know, if people are interested in learning how to do that, we welcome them. You mm -hmm. know, it's an, it, it, you have to have some interest in learning on your own and then you know picking up the ball and just giving it a try we um are always looking to have people help us with the live productions that's a big help we have some members and um some high school students that are helping us tonight's a game actually and of course we have sponsors which i've been delayed in getting out all of my sponsor letters yes i'm falling behind my tasks we do have three, you know, we um, that uh, have been with us before, um, and we'll also put them in a loop on the radio because we had wanted to do live radio, but it's really adds a whole nother element. Someone has to be here. It's just adds a lot more staff, and um, I think it's uh, not wise to do that at this time. So we'll, we'll include them in a um, a rotation on the radio. Mm. Approximately how many people does it take to do a live uh, football game? Well, if you're, um, if we're going to do three camera, it would be th three camera, one probably, you know, this one directing, it's good to have someone on audio, so two d below, so that's five, and then one that's troubleshooting or keeping track of what's going on with the, um, with where Richie is, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes whatever is happening with that audio. Mm -hmm. um, so ideally it's like six. Um, sometimes we've had more, which has always been great. Um, but, you know, six is a good number. And then when we were doing live radio, we'd have to have another person here that's seven and right. another person really looking at the via because the thing drops off and, you know, Richie's going 100 miles an hour. <laughs> it's like there's no radio <laughs> coming over. Um, yeah, so... So it's quite a production in terms of manpower yes. to, to get these things going yep. and, and off and, uh, and running. Yeah, and a lot more than I think people may think that it is. And then, of course, there's the, the post-production, which is a lot of hours as well, taking the material off the camera. You know, every station handles it differently. We actually try to make sure the sound is good and, um, you know, put up, you know, we put up the slides, make sure the the sponsors are in correctly um we often have player pictures we don't even have the player pictures this year um it, you know hopefully we'll get them mm -hmm. i don't know mm -hmm. you know maybe someone out there <laughs> go take the pictures of the football players in their uniforms um but we're getting the game at least so and that is one of the popular programs on the cable station it seems to be. Yeah, People I like mean, to talk about it. yeah. I mean, Newberry Port's very football and sports oriented. The track. I mean, we we haven't filmed. There's a lot of sports that we don't film. Um, we're not. It's not like we're snubbing them or anything. It's just some of them are harder to film. It's not as easy. It's just the setup is different. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we might try something with field hockey because they're playing at the um, the field. But we also. Um, 
you know, we try to do other things for the school as well if there's other functions that are happening. Um, I mean, I saw Stephanie from the high school, Stephanie Williams, and I said if any of the student-directed plays are written, you know, if they're student-written, we'd love to have them either to put on the channel or they can come and do a little s a sketch or scene from their, their play. Um, and what else? We've had the poetry um, groups on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, another thing that we do with the school is Drew Mahollin has a show, Afternoon Drive, so he's been able to include um, a lot of school, school personnel, a lot of athletics, but um, he also involves other people as well. He's had um, principals on and superintendent. It's really great. And, you know, he had recently had Mike Lynch on, which was really interesting. And he had William Shuttleworth, of course, who walked across mm -hmm. the United States of America in mm -hmm. 109 days. He said he took five days off. I think he said the total was 114. Did I get that right? Uh, of 115. And um, he took five days off, which he doesn't want to count because he wasn't walking on those days. He's quite amazing. Yes. Yeah, he seems to be. Yeah. And Drew does an interview show, so he did a lot of the interviews with yes. the mm -hmm. staff at the high school. And yep, and we have another show that Dyke Hendrickson does called um, Along the Merrimack, Life Along the Merrimack. And it's really great. That's um, on Tuesdays at 2 to 2.30, and then Drew's is 3 to 4. And these are all available on SoundCloud and also on YouTube, and we replay them. Um, but Dyke has a lot of interesting guests on. Um, they're uh, generally about the Merrimack. <laughs> and then we have another person who does a radio program, um, Mary Jacobson and Melinda Everett. They do Friday morning, um, the morning show, and this morning Glee Woodworth was on. It's great. So that we do have a lot of good production, and it's it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to keep going <laughs> and keep everything working. And, and yeah. so it would be great to have <coughs> more help, more volunteers, more people. You know, volunteers, it's an interesting topic. Okay. Because, you know, sometimes volunteering um, involves just someone who is very friendly and outgoing and... You know, it's basically, you know, either greeting somebody or providing some basic help. Here, it's a lot more involved. So they, you know, for someone who, first of all, everyone would become a member. So if someone wants to, we call all of our members, member volunteers, if they want to be part of a production crew or help with any kind of internal production. Um, everyone can do that, but it's definitely there's more to learn and a lot of people it's just more than they want to take on as a volunteer as far as volunteering any kind of our operations like um let's say sponsorship or development i haven't really um looked for volunteers because it it takes a lot of time for me to work with the volunteer and i i feel so stretched sometimes with just my own time when we have an intern you know tyler now has been working with them prior to that i would be working with them mm -hmm. um so, I mean, it takes a, an enormous amount of time, honestly. Mm -hmm. So a lot of places have volunteer coordinators, you know, and someone who runs a volunteer program. Um, and I can definitely see why, because they, they need training and they need, you know. Right. They're, they're your staff, essentially. So right. you just let them go. Yeah. Um, so, and, yeah. And certainly for certain productions and also for meetings, for city council meetings and school committee meetings and the upcoming future meetings that you will be recording as well people need to be trained we still are looking for volunteers i believe oh of course yes. i mean so yes we're looking for members who are interested in volunteering their Thank time you. as a member to right. go capture a meeting or something of interest to them that was the beginning idea of community media and, and it was before everyone had a phone now everyone has a phone so there's really just not that pressing need to go learn a camera and share some event mm. because they're all posted on youtube little clips on facebook it's just all over the place you, mm. you just don't you know i mean maybe someone's not capturing the whole genie geiger you know walk but chances are you're going to be able to see clips of that on facebook youtube instagram so and on their website and they'll have photos and they'll have this and they'll have uploads and they'll have conversations so people aren't as driven to do that if someone is driven to do that and has a particular thing in mind that they like like storm surge for example mm -hmm. um you know the storm surge group has you know interested in having someone cover their their storm surge meetings that are coming up and i'm not sure we, we're going to be able to manage 
that additional because um, we can't say yes to everybody so we it, we have to be very careful about who we say yes to because mm -hmm. we don't want to exclude people mm -hmm. um, so yeah that's what we would use kids in the summer for too they, they they would be happy to go out and get different um, if someone called we'd say oh yeah we have some interns that are available to go film something so we, it was okay so whoever called we generally had could say yes mm -hmm. now if someone calls we don't really have the extra staff mm -hmm. or members to do it where where are we in time where are we we have we have about 10 more minutes 10 to 15 minutes so um uh, there was just a question that flitted through my mind as you were saying that, and hopefully, hopefully I can catch it back, grab it back. So, something to do with the changes, mm -hmm. since there have been so many changes in technology, and as you're saying, even with cell phones now, everybody can do everything on their cell phone. So, how how about um, you know people who are doing filming on mm -hmm. their cell phones? It's translatable to putting a show on here. Um, Yes and no. It's not for the channel. It's a different format, and it's they they could upload their um, clips, and Tyler can nod or grimace. Um, you know, let's say that iPhone is probably easier on the Mac. They can put it on maybe, and then take those clips and put them into a timeline on Adobe. So it's a little bit more cumbersome now on the carousel bulletin board i believe we can it's has it's much more open with format so we can take someone's um youtube uh like i say they did a little promo about something that was going on um which i have some of the students doing some short promos to put on those the the bulletin boards to keep those interesting that's a possibility so yeah they could join and do that for sure we don't have it's a place where they could just deposit things right now again these are like we okay now now we have that we have to look what are we doing with it you know what is it um and they need to sign the the compliance that they're understanding the fcc rules and things like that so um yeah so they'd have to be a member mm -hmm. but it's doable right 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 yeah i just know that there's a lot of people that are out there doing little I know. videos and little other types of things and was wondering how translatable it would be for the know, bulletin for board in. yeah i mean it they could do a, a show but we try to keep mm. anything that's a show really like i'd say eight minutes and up ten minutes mm -hmm. otherwise we try to put it on the the bulletin board mm -hmm. but i mean it, it, again if someone had some idea and they it involved their phone and they wanted to be my coming yeah right Right. We don't turn people away, <laughs> generally. <laughs> and I know a few years ago for the Earthport Film Festival, there were a couple of local uh, submissions from young people. Mm -hmm. And this w seems like would be a great, you know, place to start. Yeah. And, um, or not. It is. No, it is. <laughs> no, we have, um, we have the Gulf of Maine Institute. Mm -hmm. um, they have submitted stuff. It was, I think we used the they did something for the river mm -hmm. um when the theme was um there was a river theme i think uh again it's just i, I you know it's hard to know what um it, sometimes it's hard to connect with what's happening at the high school i mean they know we're here we do the this is will be in our eighth ninth maybe um earthport film festival it's an international film festival it's quite amazing um and students certainly would be great to have them. And I, I think Elizabeth has, you know, the GOMI, they know um, mm -hmm. about it. I don't know. They get busy. I mean, they can submit stuff that they do in the summer, too. Mm -hmm. So I think our film freeway um, submissions begin probably, uh, they, c they could have already begun. Elizabeth's usually right on top of that. So, yeah. Yeah, it seems like I, I remember hearing around December and January is when she starts getting receiving them back in right yes um, well they they're submitting and then she'll start screening them mm -hmm. yeah because right. that again is, takes up some time I think we had I want to say I'll be bold over 40 which is a lot that is I mean it's just you know small short um, you know as you know 20 yeah. minutes and under film festival which is good and they're it's so interesting it's fascinating they're all such yeah diverse and amazing productions yeah really 
I mean, it would be great to, all these things that we do could take a whole person, a whole job. (laughs) 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 That. A so. different person for each channel, yes. for the radio. Yeah. For I mean, each, you could literally could. There's so much you can do and so many ways to improve on what we're doing. Um, but it's very time-consuming. Mm-hmm. And it, it takes a lot to learn how to do this stuff. And things are changing. Things are breaking. Mm-hmm. End of life for Windows 7. Of course, we all have Windows 7. <laughs> That's what we have. <laughs> Can we step back a bit to the funding again? Because Mm -hmm. you did mention that some stations, even though there will be funding cuts from cable, they may be able to, you know, soldier on fairly well. So what other types of funding can... So you can do fundraising, which um, people, you know, always say, oh, you should do fundraising. Um, Our our Earthport Film Festival is a quote-unquote fundraiser. It um, Fundraising takes money to get going and it takes a lot of people power Mm -hmm. um and then there's grant writing some people do that most of the access centers are not doing that at this time Mm -hmm. they will either um they do sponsors like we do for um the sports we could definitely use more sponsors i will try to reach out to the sponsors that we've had in the past that we you know haven't connected with Mm -hmm. And then new ones, you know, we're, it's a good place to get your name. It's not an advertisement. It's just a recognition that you support the work that we're doing. So you get like 10 seconds uh, screen on the, um, on the TV and then just a name recognition. But it, again, it shows that you're interested in community information and community media. Um, membership. Uh, I mean, most people most of the access centers get their funding from the the franchise fees Mm -hmm. which is what's going down Mm -hmm. i mean it's just it is hard yeah and certainly larger communities or cities have more access to yeah and and they also have access to more members as well in addition to yeah like cambridge haverhill danvers i mean methuen a lot of places have um more our our subscribers about seven thousand and dropping (laughs) here <laughs> dropping now <laughs> so like the last this last it's several thousand like in the last quarter you know it, it can go down three thousand or four thousand i mean that's a lot mm-hmm. you know so i don't know we'll see what happens mm-hmm. so what are your um short-term hopes for this, mm. this transition say with the fcc ruling I'm hoping that, um, well, I'm hoping that Comcast has the decency to let our contract stand as it is and, um, you know, leave the services that they, that they have, I feel, misidentified as in kind. They're not in kind if you go to collect later for them. They were part of the contract that was negotiated. Oh, part of what we're giving you is a discount for the seniors. And now they're turning around saying, well, that's in kind. And we're going to recollect now for that. Um, you know, I, I just, I just don't think that that just doesn't seem right to me at all. I mean, they, they give us the free cable here. Wow. You know, gee, that is, it costs them nothing to do that. And, you know, they just basically want community media to die they want the channels back for their you know more of what they already have a lot of Mm -hmm. not much Mm -hmm. and um you know they will in time get them back that's what they're aiming for um but they're not losing money they'd like people to think we're losing money because people are cutting no they're going more on the internet they have to have internet for streaming so they tend to buy more internet service so it's it's just they're not losing money and it's you know the numbers are out there they're not Mm -hmm. um of course we will lose the money and we should and uh, just a note on that there is a streaming tax that is in the mass state house now which you know i they're working on it but i don't know how long these things take and that would be to tax all of the streaming services the same five percent that um the community the media corporations had to pay the reason it was brought about was so that everybody could share in this resource and it it wouldn't just be left for the corporations that had all the money and then they'd be determining what you're going to hear on the on these different um and what you're going to see 
they determine they make the decision about all these things and so this this is why it's about freedom of speech you know freedom of you know expression mm -hmm. for people in the community so we'll see what happens with that mm -hmm. but i'm afraid that that is not going to come in time and they're of course doing an appeal on the third rule and that um we have a representative who's been lobbying and working in washington and it could be a year and a half for an appeal to come. To, I mean, it's just really going to, a lot will suffer. They won't be able to regroup mm -hmm. after. They'll lose their space. They'll lose everything. So hopefully we won't be in that position. So hopefully we'll just be able to at least stay status quo for now and see what happens with the streaming tax. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you said, the voice of the people, you know, needs to be heard. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're losing places for people to have their voice heard. And, you know, as it's very American, you know, it has to be people all of a sudden will go, wait, what happened? And then, then, <laughs> then someone will get interested in trying to, you know, come back and make a change. But, you know, a lot of people kind of take some of these things for granted, our freedom of speech, you know, free press, things like that. It's very important. It's very important. Good journalism. Mm -hmm. You know, so. And that's what Qu Port Media or NCM Hub is here for. Yes. For yeah. And we uh, we also try to support the vets as much as we can too, and active military because um, the way I feel, and you know, as an exec executive director, and I've been involved with this for a long time, that without people who are going out to preserve our freedom, there's no freedom. So we, this wouldn't be necessary. Mm -hmm. You know, freedom. You know to be able to put a live show on or play live music or, you know, do anything. Um, what we're doing, mm -hmm. you know, you go to jail. <laughs> so, <laughs> so hopefully people will see the, the value. And when you said that this um, organization supports the vets as well, is, are there special membership rates or, you know, um, programming or? Yeah, you know, that's, uh, I think I would just charge them the, the students, uh, senior um, if, if we don't have a lot of vets that join, we have a, a couple here and there, but mm -hmm. if there's a program that I can put on or, or some information I can get out, I do that. Um, I'd like to start a radio show. I've had it in mind for a year. It's really hard to get something started. I have the, some guests in mind, but I, mm -hmm. and I have a couple of people in mind that might be able to participate, um, vets that could do the actual show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's more like vet driven. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Well, we just have a few minutes left, so are, are there any other things that you would like people to know about NCM Hub? And Well, I think that it takes a good staff, which I have here. Um, you know, right now it's Tyler, who's uh, amazing. Yay, Tyler. And <laughs> Caleb, who's also amazing. Yay, Caleb. Um, and then we have some great interns. Right now we have Lily, Nora, and Caroline. And I hope I'm not forgetting. And Adam's back to do a few meetings when he can. Um, and Sarah Brocher's doing the um, um, football. And, of course, a board that supports the work that we do and doesn't, you know, there are a lot of boards that will try to go in <coughs> directions that maybe are not as desirable. But I think... Um, pretty much the people the board members and of course you're on the board um are, have been involved so they understand what goes into it and what's it what it is about so mm -hmm. that that is important we've had people specifically try to do like oh come on for fundraising or a different type of thing and sometimes it's just not clear and it's probably you know they need more education too but it's hard to understand what community media is a lot of people don't understand so um yeah i hope i've made a little clear but if anyone has any questions <laughs> feel free send me an email i can certainly or stop by stop by yeah um and i just want to say that i did start because i think you you tapped me on the shoulder one day probably at city hall and said we need somebody to help with yeah. the city council meetings you know um taping the city council meetings the city so council meetings. i did my two-year mm -hmm. volunteer stint doing oh that God. and had a, a wonderful teacher in ken deer he he had been ken doing it amazing too. prior to me and um, and then was able to start doing a show mm -hmm. in the other studio on the cable access. Yep. And, and then this is exciting, learning the radio as well. Yeah. So it's fun. The it radio is. is fun, yeah. So, uh, and being on the board. So it's, it's been a great experience, and it has really opened my eyes in terms of what, what community 
yeah. TV is. And if I was in high school again, I certainly, and, and found out about this resource, I, I think I would have been down there. But yeah, me too. But I can't go back to high school. Me and either. And I think that might be a good <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. So we are getting ready to wrap up. Sarah, I just want to say thank you very much thank for being on Thank you for inviting me to be on. Yes. We've been talking with Sarah Hayden. She's the executive director of the NCM Hub, Newburyport, Greater Newburyport Community Hub. Uh, and uh, thank you again. You have been listening to On the Air with Lynn Varney.